Welcome back to the weekly news roundup and the Linux news edition. All those fun, relevant things going on in Linux. And this week, it's just a bunch of Ubuntu news, mostly. Uh, this is a follow-up of our story. I don't remember if it was last week or the week before where we had the story that said, do not upgrade Ubuntu right now. Um, that had to do with there's a lot of weird underlying code bases. If you're on 2310 going to 2404, technically it's possible to do a dist upgrade in the terminal and upgrade, but then you would have a lot of weird nightmares going on because there's some weird funky stuff that uh, they had a fix to the uh, YK38 bug and they had uh, a, a complete switch of where Thunderbird data was going because it switched from a dev repository package to a snap. And then there are a bunch of other little tiny things that was actually interfering if you tried to do a direct upgrade path. Now, of course, if you just downloaded the the brand new version, spun up a new, new version, and hey, you would have you know, perfectly fine system, minus whatever bugs always cap come on the first few days of a first release. But uh, they issued a warning, do not try and do a manual upgrade yet. Wait until the upgrade path. Well, that upgrade path is now here. And so with that upgrade path, what is going on is um, they're actually doing the upgrade through the GUI like they have done in the past. And what this is going to do is make all of those weird little changes that were a little bit harder to manage uh, as you are running your system. So if you did want to switch from 2310 to 2404, this is the time to do it. And uh, you want to do it through the terminal. So if you don't have it, you can, uh, if you don't see it in there already, you can hit the update manager dash C um, in the, uh, in the terminal. And then this should prompt the software update to say, Hey, there's new software available. Click OK. And then you might, uh, depending on how you have your software sources, you might need to go in and toggle that to go with the next LTS release or the next uh, mainline release and then upgrade there. And then you will have a smooth upgrade process that's going to take care of all that stuff for you. So you're going to see some screens in here. Uh, make sure to read all those. And then it will do a final step removing the old obsolete packages. You know, mostly all that stuff that they switched over to um, to snaps from Teps. Go uh, figure. But there it is. Uh, if you were waiting for uh, that Ubuntu upgrade path, it is now available in the GUI if you've not already seen it. Uh, also, on the latest version of GNOME, which was shipped with Ubuntu, we had the first time the ability to connect a Microsoft 365 account and to access your OneDrive accounts. But as people had started to use this, uh, they noticed that it was a little bit buggy and did not stay connected. Now, before we get into that issue, I did want to highlight this. This is something in, in all my research, I did not actually find this. The uh, connections to this is made possible by the MS Graph package. The MS Graph, uh, MS Graph package, of course, is a Microsoft graphing package. And this is done with the blessing of Microsoft on basically running APIs, which means that if at any point in time Microsoft says, no, we don't want that to happen, they can just shut it off. So it's very possible that this may not be a feature forever. Who knows? I'm just saying that um, what has been found in this is that the MS Graph package was an association between the GNOME Foundation and Microsoft, giving them relevant permissions and nods and approvals. And they could actually retract that. So just be aware of that. Now, the problem had to do with the account wasn't actually staying connected and this would cause a lot of issues. And so anytime you'd go to access the drive in Nautilus, you'd be like, it wouldn't be there. You might have to log in again, whatever else. So there is a bug, a known bug to this, and it is being patched. But if you don't want to wait for that patch, they do have the fix in it. So you're going to uh, configure your GOA 1.0 accounts con file. There is a OAuth, OAuth 2 redirect section and you want to copy the number string after localhost 
and then go back to that section and replace the invalid UTA with that client ID, save and reboot the computer. Of course, these show notes are available on the website, switchlinks.com, down, uh, which is in the description to this video. So you can go find this article in there if you need to manually make that change. And this is, uh, it's, this is one of those powers of Linux. If we know the fix is out there and it's just not yet deployed across the OS, you can always make these changes. Uh, so that's actually a, a neat little function. Uh, moving on to the gaming in Linux. Gaming in Linux, of course, is getting better by the day. Uh, but one of the issues with gaming, the same problem we're seeing with these streaming services, there's so many of these stupid streaming services showing up. You gotta, you know, There's actually TV guide websites that keep up to date on what shows are on what streaming services. So you can actually launch a website to look up the TV guide to know what to watch in your streaming service because of how complicated they are. Well, the gaming systems are getting this way as well. You got, uh, you got your Steam, of course. You have your basic one. You got your Proton. You got all of these different options. In fact, there's a whole ton of them here. And um, in fact, these are all the options there. We got we got Steam. We got Lutris, Heroic, Bottles, Itch, Legendary, RetroArch, Flatpak, Desktop Entries. Well, there is a new Flatpak launcher to manage all of this. Of course, it is a GNOME app. So it is uh, streamlined, uh, works best in the GNOME ecosystem, and it is called Cartridges. It is available as a Flatpak. So what Cartridges does is it's one unified place where you can go in and you can add your accounts and then you can import your various games. So now this gives you one place as a flat pack. You open this up and all of your games are accessible from here. So you don't have to open up the separate independent clients in order to play the games. You can just play the games directly through this. So you get in there and um, you'll hit the option to import. There's no games in here. Hit import. When he goes to import, uh, what is this, Team Fortress 2, it does bring in a Steam uh, as well. So you can boot Steam right from here. Of course, you can take that out if you want to as well. Uh, there is actually ways uh, you can toggle the, um, the various wallpapers of the games with uh, uh, some of the various sites that are out there. Go ahead and hit all of your uh, adjustments that you need to do, and then you can have an entire group of games in here, and it supports a variety of different uh, different uh, places. So if you are a big gamer and you want to play around with that cartridges application, you can go ahead and grab it from the Flathub store. Let's see what that looks like in the Flathub's brand new site. So this is a, uh, a verified package that is potentially unsafe because yeah, I can access all sorts of uh, weird files all over the place, but that's okay. Everything has that except like known shady applications. So yeah, whatever. <laughs> and on to our final story for the night, Ubuntu 2404 now runs on the Nintendo Switch. So yes, if you have that old Nintendo Switch laying around, you're like, I really don't like games, but I wanna play with some Ubuntu. Uh, it is now very possible for you to do that. And so um, it's not, they're saying here, it is not an easy prospect, but it is possible. So there was a loophole back in 2018 that allowed you to install Ubuntu on it way back then. And um, so people are playing around with that. But with the, uh, I don't know, and I don't follow the Nintendo Switch um, uh, build model stuff quite as much. But basically, there is some some new workarounds that have been discovered that will allow you to get in there and make the adjustments to your Nintendo Switch. They say it is not an easy process to do, but it does actually work. And there are some factors that that work, uh, some some elements that, that work, some elements that don't. And it is a seven year old device at point in time. Are you guys feeling old yet? I mean, I had a Game Boy when I was a kid, and not that Game Boy Color either. So, you know. That is uh, what is going on, though. Uh, you can now officially run Ubuntu 2404 on the Switch. Obviously not an official port, but <laughs> there you have it. That's fascinating stuff. Well, if you want to help support the channel, we do have a Patreon page, patreon.com slash T-O-M-M. We have our short stories on over there. Yes, another one is coming uh, for the summer. We have one more this summer, and then we'll be taking a break for the summer. I'm going to compile those into a book, uh, but that one is not out yet. My apologies for that, but uh, i got to wait for that inspiration to come on back. It is uh, mostly there. I'm almost done with it. 
And uh, now it's just getting the uh, last bit of time I need to put together the, the story. So uh, with that, guys, you want to help support the channel, patreon.com slash T-O-M-M. Of course, there's all sorts of other ways as well, super chats and uh, tips and all sorts of things like that. With that, thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.